So we're experiencing some spikes in the gold and silver markets as prices go back and forth like Aaliyah. I hate to say this, but it's a setup. After beating down prices of silver and gold, we've had a nice little run up. But did you ask yourself why? It's simple. The devil doesn't have any new tricks because the old ones keep working. For the sake of this conversation, I don't want you to take the theological or biblical framing of the word devil and want you to consider an alternative definition, which defines the devil as a person who is very clever, energetic, reckless, and mischievous. This is important because what we witnessed with silver and gold over the last 72 hours was the devil, or maybe his little helpers, getting us ready to pull one of the oldest tricks a bull market trap. This trick is most effective when the market has been beaten down to the point where participants are dangerously close to giving up. And then the market takes off and these beaten down participants feel like the light at the end of the tunnel is there and they run towards it. And just like the prices run up, only to find out that the light at the end of the tunnel is a train and that rally is a bull trap. The most amazing part is deep down, people know it's a trap, but that FOMO kicks in and they just can't stop themselves. Almost like a fish looking at a lure in the water saying, I know this isn't a real anchovy. Heck, I can even see a line that looks like it's attached to it, but it looks so good. And what if it's real and I miss out on this anchovy? And the fish opens his mouth. And the next thing you know, they're hooked. Hence the statement, the fish would have never gotten caught if he wouldn't have opened his mouth. The last few videos, I spent a lot of time getting us to explore the brain, how perspective influences our perception, how framing bias completely changes the way we interpret things and come into terms with the reality that we as humans are just irrational beings. These topics are so critical because it provides you with a clarity and an emotional resolve when things go crazy high or crazy low. It allows you to think in the presence of your emotions, not with your emotions. Remember that teeter-totter from many, many videos ago between emotions and cognition? And as your emotions go higher, your thinking tends to go lower and vice versa. As members of Stackers, we don't fall for this because we don't let our X system drive our decision making. It's why so many of my answers always come back to do the math. As Brent Johnson said, you can believe in magic or you can believe in math. Which brings me back to the market devil and what we experienced on Monday. As I shared in my market manipulation video, the banks, the market manipulators, the government, they don't have any new tricks. We know the game plan and the playbook. Those devils don't change their plays. They just keep running the same play over and over again because they know like Charlie Brown and Lucy, you can't resist. Which leads me to a checklist of things I want you to go through whenever you see an extreme price move like we did on Monday. I promise you, if you go through this list, it will help keep your emotions in check and your X system in check, which is gonna re reduce the likelihood of you catching FOMO or letting the market pull a Lucy and Charlie Brown on you. How can I be so certain? These are the exact questions I go through every time. One, what obvious reason caused the movement? I know that sounds like a duh, but seriously, think about this. When the war in Ukraine officially started, the spike in metal prices made sense. And just as we had that spike, the market slowly took that back. So on Monday, there were reports that Ukraine had made some progress and that Putin was under pressure. And we saw a pullback in the dollar index in hopeful anticipation that maybe a global recession could be avoided. And then people were looking forward to Tuesday's CPI number that it would come in lower. Well, as the neighborhood saying goes, if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Consider this as well. If the war led to price spiking, why would the war ending lead to price spiking? That doesn't make sense. And then think about what happened. Why didn't gold take off, the safe haven of the mall? Why didn't it participate in the same way that silver did on Monday? Because this is all a trap in my opinion. And that leads me to the question number two. Is there market confluence? Are all the market indicators that we watch flashing green for gold? Are you looking at the technicals for things like breakouts or resistance or price charts or the moving day average? Are you looking at broader economic data? Did you look at the trading volume? Ask yourself, does this movement make sense? Not am I happy or sad, but does it make sense? Going back to Monday, for me it was, why in the world would gold have less than a 1% price movement while silver had 4.5% movement? I don't know, it didn't make sense. And that was after silver had a number of up days, but what happened? What changed in the market? No one could tell me, and so that doesn't make me feel comfortable. The third thing, economic data. What's now and what's coming out. Once a week, I want you to get in the habit of checking this website. It's marketwatch.com slash economy dash politics 
slash calendar. So you're on the screen. I want you to get in the habit of looking and seeing what economic data is coming out that week or even two weeks out. Uh, this is something I use all the time, especially when you think you're about to make a purchase. I want you to pay attention to this because while we're not trying to time the market, we do know that certain things are going to happen. And so that information can help you. In particular, what I've noticed is that the week of or the week before the FOMC meeting, wild price action. Stuff that doesn't make sense starts occurring. And I can get a sense that maybe this is just time for me to sit out and find out what's going on, which is kind of what's happening now. On the 21st, we're gonna have the FOC meeting and anywhere from three quarters of a point to a point is expected. Also, watch at the end of the month, especially when we have end of the quarter options expiration. You'll see a lot of price movement there. So these are the kind of things I want you to be thinking about as you continue to stack, but you want to do it in the context of what else is going on. Remember, just because you got paid doesn't mean you get to run over to the LCS like a drunken sailor on leave. Sometimes a slight pause can make a huge difference. For example, I fully expected a sharp pullback on Tuesday and I was ready to pounce. Even though I expect a lot more pain in this market, my current thesis is that we're going to see silver fall below $17 again and gold fall in into the $1,600 range. But that's my thesis and until we get some confirmation i've got to also stay in the market and make sure i take advantage of opportunities and my idea here is gold at 1700 or 1710 which is what i paid for an ounce yesterday makes all the sense in the world to me no matter what remember we're still talking about ifs in this market and if the market retreats to the current levels below the current levels that i expect well you know what we said earlier about ifs and fifths by the way, I want to remind you of a number of things that I've told you numerous times about your LCS. Take a look at the screen because I'm not going to go through them all. To make a long story short, remember that concern you had about the bad deal I made with my LCS when I swapped all that silver for gold? But I digress. I did a quick drive-by on my LCS yesterday. Not Boys in the Hood style drive-by, more like Norm from Cheers kind of drive-by. And what did I walk up on? Him buying a gold bar for 1710. Maybe I had to bat my eyes a little. I maybe even had to show a little ankle skin. Just kidding. But I did score that gold bar that he had just purchased for 710. <laughs> If you're receiving value from this video, if you've learned anything from this video, if you've been entertained. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Thanks, Russell. I, I got this. All I ask is that you hit the like button and maybe even comment. As a creator, I do this for the love of educating and sharing and your likes and your comments really mean the world to me and they help keep me motivated. So please hit the like button. And while we're on a quick break, you might have noticed a little something different on my display here because you all know my display game is, is boring like my stacking, right? But it just got a little more exciting. So I wanted to publicly thank Frankie for this incredibly generous gift I received yesterday. I had the opportunity to open it with my daughter and it was truly a special moment. So thank you for the gift. Built this himself, used a, a fancy CNC router, uh, and then gifted me this wonderful John Wick plaque, which, you know, John Wick is one of my favorite movies, and, and then the John Wick coin. And y'all know I love the John Wick coin, but I'm too cheap to buy it. So, Frankie, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I just can't thank you enough. There's no easy transition from that to the next point, so let's just keep moving. Four, market psychology. Remember all those videos I did covering market psychology and the anatomy of bubble? Yeah, I didn't do it for kicks and giggles, folks. Everything we do is about offering you a different skill set that will help you. I want you to think about these skills as like a toolbox and you're a repair person. Some things need a hammer, some need a wrench, some need a screwdriver. And so as we continue to go through all these topics, I want you to put them in your toolbox so that you can access them later because they will help you. And so when we think about what's just happened, ask yourself a simple question. Is the market primed and poised for a takeoff or are the participants beaten down and looking for any reason to get excited about a potential rally? And number five, the last question I want you to ask is, will there be another buying opportunity if I miss this moment? The short answer is always yes. Healthy markets don't go straight up. Look at any market chart, and especially if you'll start to understand Elliott Wave trading, which you hear me talk about sometimes, it's based on this idea that the markets go up and then they, they have these retracements that come back down and then they go back up, hopefully making higher lows and higher highs. So you may not be able to buy at that exact same price, but one, you should have been buying along the way, unless there's a situation where the market's clearly falling down and then we let the knife fall and then we pick it up off the ground. Or two, that these retracements can easily come within 10 or 20% of that price that you may think you may have missed. So you're not missing much at all. And most importantly, there are just times when the market direction isn't clear and we need it to declare a direction. So waiting is prudent. So there's almost always a pullback. 
I rather you wait and get confirmation and then buy on the retracement or the move back than to buy and then watch it fall in price. So the market devil doesn't have any new tricks simply because no one has ever taught us how to avoid the current ones that they're using. So they've never had to learn any new tricks. And the current trick right now is the bull trap. We're not gonna fall for that because we now have five questions or checkpoints we're going to use to evaluate these situations so we can gain clarity. So our X system doesn't take over. So we don't fall victim to seeing what we wanna see or so that our framing bias doesn't make us see the exact same two yellow squares as being different colors. Sorry to my colorblind folks. But trust, those are the same color. I don't want you to feel this FOMO. I want you to take moments and pause and think about what you're seeing and take these questions into consideration and you'll feel a heck of a lot better. And then you'll be able to make more intellectual, cognitive-based decisions. In the comments section, share have you ever FOMO'd in? Or you could talk about which of the five points seems to make the most sense to you or which of the five points are you gonna start monitoring or using in your daily life? As you know, folks, I'm off to Ghana for two weeks, so please don't be offended if I don't respond uh, to every comment. I will try to do my best uh, and my video schedule may be off a little bit in the short term while I'm gone. But what I do want you to, to be watching for is I want you to watch gold at 1670, um, somewhere right around there. If it, if it drops below 1670, then we are definitely going into the low 1600s with gold. Gold has bounced off of the 1670 level like four or five times. So I expect it to hold. Silver is a completely different scenario. Silver is standing at the crossroads. And so don't be surprised if you see a little rally here, followed by some real pain, especially as we get into next week's Fed meeting. The stock market has a lot of room to fall and it's going to be pain. I mean, it's going to be real pain and there's no way it's going, it's not going to spill over into our area, especially as people need money for short coverings and things like that. Don't get discouraged. Don't let the volatility in these crazy days disrupt you. Stick to your plan, stick to your stat stacking strategy, put an A in your grade sheet for today and always stack smarter and never stop learning. Yeah.